Cooler Master's SK Series mechanical keyboards help you keep a low profile with ultra-flat double-shot keycaps and a slim, minimalist design. Available in full-size trim as the SK650 or the even more portable 10 keyless SK630, these keyboards feel great thanks to genuine Cherry MX low-profile mechanical switches. They've also got a durable brushed aluminum top plate and a detachable and braided USB Type-C cable, so click the sponsor link in the description for more on the Cooler Master SK630 and SK650. Welcome back guys. I wanted to say thank you to any of you who watched my video from last week about actually using Riptide, my $10,000 plus PC build, because it was very well received and I'm actually really happy to be using that computer. But today I'm going to follow up on something that quite a few people commented about in that video, which was that uh, the cable management in my computer room is abysmal right now. In fact, I just really haven't spent much time on it at all. So that's what today's video is about, cable management in a computer room. I have two computers, I have a few outlets to deal with, and I'm also got sit stand desks to work with too. I have an assortment of products behind me. I'm going to go over those and then I'll talk about the pros and cons of each one after I've cable managed my computer room. So here on the dining room table I have an assortment of stuff I'm going to be using today. The stuff on the right I'm going to talk about less. We got some plugs over here and that kind of thing. Stuff on the left is the actual cable management gear and I've been sort of assembling this actually for over the past year or so. I've been planning this project for quite some time. So for comparison first off the classic IKEA Signum. This has been around for quite some time. It's inexpensive, available at Ikea. It's an under desk rack that you can just pile your cables in. I have a few of those available. I also have this ST Simple Cord Cable Concealer. This is popular because it gives a very clean sort of finished look if you want to run it along your baseboards or something like that. It's also modular, has a couple connective pieces and you can cut it to size whether you want to go 90 degree in corners or angle stuff up a wall to get to an outlet or something like that. This, this one here does not have good packaging at all. Several of these were just bought directly from Amazon. Amazon, so all they have is a little sticker on them. This is the Wire Tamer Cable Management Tray 2-pack from Johto. We have this cable management sleeve, so it's got like a zipper on one side and it's kind of long. Gather the cables up together, perfect for home or office use. I have kind of a classic set of adhesive-based uh, little cable clips, uh, retention clips, so these can kind of cinch up and then they can release. I have this right here, which is a 100-pack of these little plastic brackets. You just screw them on and then it gives you some brackets to connect the zip tie up to. This 3M Scotch indoor mounting thing, which I honestly have no idea what it is. It's been so long since I ordered it. Uh, and then I've got some more traditional just nail-based uh, cable management pieces here. So just a nail to the wall with a little hook on it that holds the cable down. And lastly, for direct cable management gear, I have this interesting piece, which is uh, also, it's the J Channel Cable Raceway, 48 inch. So long, adhesive on the back, you attach it to a wall or I guess the underside of a desk, and then you can just sort of tuck cables in it that way. Finally, some other gear I'm using today, I've got some little half inch screws for drilling into a desk without drilling through the desk. I've got this, which is just an adhesive headphone holder, also by Johto. I've got my impact drill and, drill and driver for drilling holes, but I'll probably probably just use this for drilling in because I don't want to over drill and the impact driver is really good at doing that. And then lastly, we got a couple power strips and these are for undermounting on the desk to provide power plugs in a more convenient location as well as some USB charging ports. And I've got a couple versions of that. This kind of smaller one with two plugs and two ports and then this uh, longer one by Trond. Uh, and both of these I purchased specifically because they have the mounting holes on either side so you can mount them with screws, not just as adhesive. We stopped by Ace Hardware to supplement uh, more cable management stuff. Mainly I wanted these little slim plugs, the flat ones that plug in and then come off at an angle because I think they just look a lot nicer, keep things cleaner. And also prevent like your dog from bumping up against the plug that's sticking out and possibly breaking the uh, wall plate for it. We do need to replace the wall plate because of that. So I got three of these. They're all rated for somewhat different uh, usage. I'm hoping to implement them in different places. I got a black one, I got this sort of strange colored one here, and I got a white one. Uh, also, we've got some flex tubing. So this I'm hopefully gonna be using behind the computers just to sort of tidy up the cables coming off the back. Uh, I only got one small pack of this for now, but I'll see how it looks and how it works and might add more of that in the future too. And now Hero is going to take us on a tour of the computer room itself. Here it is, you guys probably remember, there's Riptide. My workstation is right here. My wife's workstation is right here. Joe has added this uh, 
uh, C-stand light just so we can have some more light in the room for this video in particular. Most of the time it's actually fairly dark in here though because I just have a china ball in the corner and then one more light right here. But here's what we got to worry about when it comes to cable management. First off, switch on the wall has been taped in the on position for quite some time. It's because I had a couple outlets in this room that weren't working so everything was running off of the switch controlled outlet which is under this desk. I need to wire that outlet over to the china ball so that we can use the switch again to turn that light on and off. And I've got one outlet down here and then one more outlet over here in the guitar corner and those is what needs to power everything else in the room. We did recently move these bookshelves in here which is pretty nice uh, but my uh, internet is coming through the ceiling right there and down here and then there is a switch. So that is where all the internet in the room comes in. So need to wire the internet from that direction. Need to wire power from here and here to power this workstation and this workstation. Need to clean my wife's desk off, of course, because it's super dusty. I can't believe she lives that way. And then of course, we've got my custom made uh, stand here for our computers and just wanna kind of reconfigure that a little bit better so that the cable management looks nice. And I'm hopefully gonna tuck as much stuff down under there as possible because that was kind of the goal when we built this. So I think that pretty much explains the goals for this video. Let's get to work. Yay. Excellent. So here is how I think I want to attack this. I'm going to treat each desktop here as sort of an individual unit and try to get stuff wired up, whether it's power for speakers or a monitor or the desks themselves also have power. Try to wire all of that over to a single side so I can have a single cable going down to that to plug into wherever that's going to plug in. This down there is now plugged in to the uh, lamp that's up there so I can use the power switch to turn that on and off again. So before anything else, I want to run one of the cable concealers along here for that cable. And also, if you haven't already been able to tell our walls have insane texturing on them that is not our choice that was the previous owners there's not a whole lot we can do about it right now without some major work so I just have to deal with it that means that I can't use these long adhesive strips that come with the cable concealer to attach it to the wall because it just it's not gonna stick with all that so instead of the adhesive I'm gonna be using the included screws to mount these to the wall Joe's just lining up a shot. Oh, here, that's so convenient. Just that's where you want to lie down? Yep, he's comfortable. Check it out guys, the room is pretty much cable managed. I say pretty much because of course a project like this is never gonna be completely finished, but the main thing that I'm missing is some longer display port cables. I, I need to go from here over to this computer and I think I, we could have a better situation going from this down to this computer as well. I'm also looking at this angle and I can see cables there, but you're gonna have to ignore those for the time being. It's all right, don't worry. 
let's move on. So we tried to do a little before and after shot so you guys could sort of get an idea of what's been done and what has changed. I am feeling really, really good about everything just because there's so much fewer cables down here and down here. Already just trying to point out the things that I'm not completely happy with right now, aside from this thing right there. That's partially there because my wife needs to be able to switch to do the KVM here between her uh, laptop and the desktop, um, but that could be fixed up a little bit more. Also down here, we have a single plug sticking out and that is for the plugs coming over for the lights. I was able to connect up both lights to the switch, so that's kind of nice, but there's a plug that just had to stick out there just a little bit, it's not a huge deal. And in fact, I could plug another light into that if I really wanted to, I guess. What I'm happy with is everything else, and I wanted to take some time now to go over the cable management products that I used and sort of give you my feedback, the pros and the cons for each one. So first off, we have the ST Simple Cord Cable Concealer, which I pretty much just used for a run right along the bottom of this wall. And part of that was because continuing that run behind this wouldn't have done us a whole lot of good since it's, it's going to be blocked anyway and also moving all this stuff was going to be a challenge so we left it as is. I'm happy with the little run that we got of it going there. It's going to keep it you know up against the wall and I like how clean it looks with sort of the angled flat plugs on the wall too and now we have an extra plug there that we can actually plug stuff into and use. That's convenient. On the plus side this does include adhesive strips so you can connect it directly to the wall although I tried to avoid using adhesive as much as possible in this project and I really can't use adhesive on my wall because of all the texturing which really sucks but we have to deal with it so I ended up using the included screws and they do include screws as well as wall anchors so that's nice it gets a star for that and it has probably the cleanest finish of any of the products that I've used today it is a little cumbersome to attach uh, the outer piece here with cables running through it and I can imagine with multiple cables that would be even more challenging and also getting the joints to line up correctly was a little bit difficult but overall I think it's a good product you just got to bear in mind it's not the easiest to work with also some of the joints were a little hard to get attached and it does have to be cut to length where you want to, um, which maybe is a pro or, or a con for you depending on how custom you want to do stuff. But overall, I think it's a good product. You just got to bear in mind some of those caveats. The IKEA Signum is next. We use this in a couple places uh, at the back of both my desk and my wife's desk. So um, these are an old standby. They've been around for a while. The pros are that they do include screws and mounting hardware and it will hold a lot of cables or power bricks. So if you have power bricks for laptops or monitors, you can just sort of tuck them in there and forget about it. You also have a lot of room to work with so you don't necessarily need to have all of your cables like completely wrapped up perfectly. However, it does also hang down a bit from the back. So depending on whether or not you want a super clean finish finish or not, these may or may not work for you. I like them because they're flexible, they're inexpensive, they're easy to put multiple ones on the same desk, but if you're looking for the cleanest possible thing, uh, it's probably not going to be it. Next up are these wire tamer cable management trays. I did end up using one of these. It's uh, tucked up back there at the back right of my desk. From this angle, you can actually see all the cables that are in it, kind of, which isn't the best look, but if you're looking at it from the right, it actually does give, uh, you know, a relatively clean finish just because it's got a simple black finish. It is a little on the flimsy side and it's only got two screw points to hold it down, uh, one on either side. They're kind of angled on the side so you can still get a screwdriver up there to mount that. So that's relatively well designed. So I think this was a, a decent product um, depending on where you're placing it of course. Just uh, wish it was a little sturdier. Next are these Johto cable management sleeves and these are like a really simple design. It's just neoprene and a zipper and some hemming honestly, uh, which is cool because you know you can actually expand them so you can zip up multiple ones of these together. So if you have a lot of cables to tap together, you could do that. However, I just found no direct use for them here. And I think that was mainly because I ended up using the wire loom for a run that I had to do that was kind of like that. These could maybe be used situationally if you really needed to keep dust off of cables or if you had a lot of them to wrap up all at once. But I don't think they look the cleanest um, when it's actually wrapped. So that's why I didn't end up using them. Down here, I put the J channel raceway, the 48 inch raceway, which uh, I like. Um, however, I did drill it to the wall. So I used my own screws to do that. It does not come with screws. It just comes with one single long adhesive strip, which might work if you are actually attaching it to a flat wall. But I don't like relying on adhesive long term for anything that might have weight going on it, which is why I drilled it in. With it drilled in, it's super sturdy. It's really easy to just tuck the cables in there and you can pull them out if you need to as well. I was even able to have this ugly thing popping out like that, which like I said is ugly, but I was still able to do. So it's a at least functional. It's got a relatively clean look and you could cut it to length as well if you wanted to. So I think that's a decent product too. I think it was only maybe 10 or $11. 
This gray plastic cable loom I actually picked up at Ace Hardware, so I didn't include it in the beginning of the video, but I think this is a fantastic product as well. Just don't buy it at Ace Hardware. We spent too much money for a relatively small amount of it. You can get this online really cheap, so I'll try to find some there and uh, point it out. It's just really convenient because if you have a group of cables and you need to run it across somewhere that's gonna be visible, it wraps them up, it looks much cleaner, and because it's split down the entire way, you can unwrap it and remove or add cables if you need to. That's how I was able to take this lamp right here, run it down there and plug it into the mid plug that's coming from that. And now I can use our light switch to turn both lights on and off. Wow, amazing technology. We had these adhesive cable clips as well. I only ended up using them back here on the back of my wife's desk, but then I rerouted the wiring, so nothing's actually connected to it right now. These are decent products. Again, since adhesive is what holds them on, I wouldn't rely on them if you're gonna be mounting them to the bottom of a desk, for instance, because anytime you have adhesive that has constant weight on it, it's going to give way eventually, especially as the summer continues to heat up. So these are decent. Uh, I like that you can pop a little screwdriver in there to unlatch them or close them. Uh, just use them situationally and don't use them for something that's gonna be hanging from the bottom of a desk. And finally, here is my winner for today. That is these little black plastic nine millimeter zip tie mounts, um, which don't really have much of a brand name going on, but I will link to them down in the video description so you guys can check them out. They are only plastic and the negatives is that they don't come with any mounting hardware. So you need to get your own screws. These are the screws I was using in case you are interested in. Uh, they're not exactly the right type of screws, but they actually fit perfectly. And for just drilling into wood, they they did just fine. You're also gonna need to bring your own zip tie or twist tie or Velcro strap in order to feed through there to strap down whatever you want to strap down. But if you're willing to deal with that, you get a bunch of them. There's over a hundred in here and I used like maybe a 10th of that. And all I had to do was pair each one up with a screw. And then I was basically able to do a bunch of custom wiring wherever I wanted. So like I've got one there and another one there and another one under here. And then I put another one back there. And that's allowing me to just really securely route all the cables down here, get them really close up to the desk and just customize and put them wherever I want to. Oh, did I mention I also installed my, my headphone stand right there? Also from Johto. That one's also great, but uh, again, screwed it in because I do not trust the adhesive. So these are my winners as far as the most useful and my favorites of the cable management gear that I have been presenting to you guys today. So again, we'll link that down in the description, but honestly, having a range of supplies was really helpful for today because anytime I needed to do anything specific, I was just like, oh, let me try this instead. But guys, that is gonna wrap it up for this massive cable management video. I'm really happy with how everything turned out and hopefully I gave you guys a little bit of feedback on the various cable management products that I used today. So if you're looking to do something similar, you can choose the product that suits your needs the best. Again, links are down in the description for everything. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out and we'll see you guys next time.